Let's read Ecclesiastes 3. Are you my lady chapter 3? Verse 2. Verse 2. You know the scripture? A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you can read that scripture several times, you will end up finding a revelation that whatever happens on earth, God has allowed it. If not, he could still stop it. Others, they happen because of a reason. Sometimes God is having a reason. And that reason, if we take it to him, it will give glory to our Father God. You, re you realize when you read the verse 1, whatever happened is because of the purpose of the one who created heaven and earth. But I want us to look at the second standard or the second verse. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. Time to uproot what is planted. Today, I want to talk about your enemy will be uprooted. Tell me about your enemy will be uprooted. If you read there, you see that always God in the Bible has allowed us to be symbolized with trees. Jesus spoke to, about us as branches. When a man that was prayed by Jesus, when he looked up, he saw a man like a tree. Our Lord, the Savior, he said, we will know you by the fruits. And a tree cannot stand without roots. And then Now, if we are going to uproot that tree, we must hit the roots. The roots is the connection that makes the tree to stand and become visible. Hallelujah. Amen. So now there's a time to plant and a time to be uprooted. This year, you will see your enemy being uprooted. I was reading Psalm 44, verse 2. I want us to read that verse there. Psalm 44, verse 2. Psalm 44, verse 2. 44, verse 2. I want to read that verse. It says, You have drawn out the pagan nation with your own hand. Then you planted and established them, Israel. It was by your power that you uproot, uprooted the pagan people. Then you spread them abroad. That verse shows that the, the weapon and the formula of God to fight the Israelites and the was to uproot their enemies and scatter them so that they must not have one language. You know, when your enemy 
is together, standing together. They make a big noise. So here you could see what God was doing when he is fighting for the Israelites. He will approach them and scatter them. I don't know if you are hearing that. And when he scattered there, automatically it means they won't have forces that bound them together. They will scatter. I remember when the Bible says, your enemy will come to you one way. And will run seven ways. They will come with one motion. With one vision. To destroy you. But now, what God is, was doing on that time, He will make the Israelites to possess their land. I don't know if you are hearing that. Wherever they move, when they were going to Canaan, Canaan was Canaan. not their land. It's the land that they were given. What God wants to do is to give you Mtum. what the enemy has built. If you believe, say amen. amen. Listen, they, 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 they planted themselves. And whatever they have done, they were doing that for you. If you remember when the Israelites were taken out of Egypt, the Bible says they plunder Egypt. They, they make Egypt to fall. Their finances went down. They were bankrupt. This is the time that your enemies will scatter. Not only scattered, they must be uprooted and you must take what they possess. You must be planted where they were planted. If, if you believe, say amen. I found only in Deuteronomy 28. If you read from 62 to 67, you find only us Christians. The reasons why we become uprooted also is when we are disobeying God. Let, let, let's just look there. In, just read 62. Verse 62. 28, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28, verse 62. Mola likile la baba nchi jolo kati na lidi chale kutimo. Kao bani usa kawa tiecha semore na mutimo wakao asibulichio. If you see that verse, it shows that, you know, God, though he planted you, he needs, he needs to agreement with you. So to disobey him, he can just allow you to meet what your enemy is supposed to go through. He says in 62, because you do not obey the voice of the Lord, your God, you who were as numerous as the star of heaven shall be left few in number. 63, it shall come about that just as the Lord delighted over you to make you prosper and multiply, so the Lord will delight over you to bring you to rain and destruction and you will be uprooted violently from the land which you are entering to possess. Amen. Here God was saying, Amen. though you can be given a promise that will come to pass, don't dwell in the fulfillment of the promise. Because what God wants you to do is to obey Him. Because once you are not, you are disobeying Him. You are doing what the enemy was doing. You are, you, you are worthy to be uprooted. You know, many people today they are not where God put them. 
They have been uprooted. They are facing what they don't know. This is the time that you know, God has to plant you beside the, those waters. Where you will bear fruits in that season. There's a season that has been placed that is not supposed to pass you. But look here, if you can be uprooted, is when you are disobeying the voice of the Lord. I love the Bible when it says the voice of the Lord. Because otherwise, the Israelites will say, you know what, we know the, the, the Quran. We know in and out the Quran. And we have been following it. Remember when the, the Bible talks about a man who came to Jesus and said, from my youth, I'll be following the word. And then what is it that I can do more? Jesus, Jesus spoke a word. Go and sell, and sell everything. And come and, and, come and follow me. He disobeyed. I don't know if you're hearing that. So there's, there's a voice of the Lord. There's a voice of the Lord that needs to be obeyed. God speaks. Sometimes you need to check your life if truly you are obeying God. And therefore you can be surprised why you are in a place where you don't wish to be. Your enemy is supposed to face the worst than what you are going through. Because God wants to plant you where no one can approach you. Can I tell you this? Here in this scripture, it shows that it's only God who's able to defeat a Christian. If God chose you like Israelites, witches can't do anything to you. It's him who decides to uproot you and plant you where you cannot even harvest. Let me speak with someone who's listening to me. Today God is going to plant you and nobody will remove you. How many of you know that where you are planted you won't dry it up. I say you won't dry it up. There's a purpose of God in that marriage, in that business, in that family, in whatever you are doing. God has planted you with a purpose. You are born in that family, in that surname, with a purpose. If you are obeying God there, there will be fruits that will be visible visible very soon. If you believe, shout hallelujah. If we read 1 Corinthians 10, from 10 to 12, from 10 to 12, you could see why many they can be uprooted don't do what the enemy has done. Don't do what the enemy has been doing. Can you read that, Mama, in verse 10? Verse 10. He says what in Pedi? Listen to this. The Bible says, do not worry like them. Do not complain like them. Be different. We need Christians who are different. Who understand that God is able to do above whatever you think. Above what you think. Or above what you ask. There are some people who are listening to me here. That God wants to do things differently. That's why your problem is not like others. Can we read verse 11 aloud in your Bible? It says what? When I read this scripture, I was like saying, we need to know why we have the Bible. All the scriptures have been written to admonish us. To us. In other words, this is 
a way out. I don't know if you're hearing me. The Bible talks about the Jews who went to Pilate and say, why all this? And later they went to Jesus. They were complaining and say, Jesus, you see what Pilate did. He destroyed all these Jews and mixed their blood with everything that was there. In other words, the blood of Jews were like useless. Jesus said, if we don't repent, it will happen likewise. Yeah, these are the scriptures that shows us we need to change when we, when we are learning something. We cannot do what they did. They were scattered and died in the desert. We are not supposed to die in the desert. They have complained after God took them out. When they reached towards the sea, they cried and said, no, what is it that must happen? They have seen the hand of the mighty God taking them out of Egypt, but they are still complaining, and they are seeing the Egyptians coming, coming to them, and they are afraid, and they forgot the same God who saved them. Can I tell you this? Sometimes when it's tough, you must reach a level where you say, God took me there, I can't die here. He took me there. I, I won't die here. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can I say this to you? What push you forward is what you have been doing. Tell your neighbor. What push you forward is what you have been doing. So now, what you have been doing is a testimony of your journey. So you cannot stop where you are because of what you are facing because you are coming from somewhere. Many times we are complaining. Look here, many problems we have complained about. They did pass without solving them. Even this one you are facing, it will pass. I say it will pass. Even this sickness will pass. Even this challenge will pass. If, if you believe, say amen. One of our challenges today, we don't know. You must sometimes go to the garden. You must go to the garden. You will see that on what you saw there, there are some things that grew up. And those things, you don't know who planted them. And if you leave those things, will affect the ones you saw. So what God normally does, he allowed Jesus through the word to those things in our lives. So that we grow very well. The reason why our territory is affected is because there are some things that grew and we, we allow them to grow. Today, by the word of God, we can allow them to be uprooted. Not long I was realizing that in your, in your life, life, there are some people who have to leave you so that you reach them. If not, the devil will use them to stop you. I don't know if you are hearing me. You know, your enemies must be uprooted. Listen, don't compromise with the enemy. The enemy is not a person close to you. Even what you are doing, which is contrary to the, to the word, is the enemy. If you allow things to happen the way they are happening, very soon, you will be blind and you don't know where you are going. So those things will grow up and close your eyes. Those things are your enemies. Remove those things so that you will be able to see ahead. People are crying to see in the spirit, but they are not uprooting something around them. It's easy. You don't need prayer to be able to see. Deal with yourself. Can you tell her? Deal with yourself. You don't need prayer. Some people they don't need impartation to function in the spirit. They need to deal with themselves. 
listen, if <laughs> now you allow all these things <laughs> that are growing up, it will, one day you'll be surprised <laughs> you are failing to get to the fruits <laughs> of the tree you planted. I don't know if you're hearing me. Let me prophesy someone <laughs> This year, God will show you where you are going. Because he's approaching those who block your way. I said, God will show you where you are going. I see your enemy uprooted. I said, they will be uprooted. Listen. Where your house is, there were trees. But now you are praising that house. Where you are are staying now, there were trees. So you need to know that for God to do best things, there are some things that need to be removed. Your enemy must be removed. I see you being established. I see you going to your destiny. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we read, maybe let's look at this one. Maybe we read Matthew 3, Matthew 3. Verse, 10. verse 10. Maybe this one can help us. It shows about the eggs of God. Always it has been placed on the root. You see, always if you want God to judge you, he used his judgment is an eggs to remove you. The eggs is there. Try to be dried up. You will see the eggs cutting you from the room. If you are fruitful, no one can remove you. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you are fruitful, fruitful means full of fruits. No one can remove you. But dry up yourself. The eggs of God is the judgment of God. It cut from it. And you will be removed. Very soon you are forgotten. I know when I was growing up, I'm sure even yourself, you saw that. There were some people who were very, very rich. But some of you have even forgotten them. They were fruitful in a wrong way. And there's a judgment of God. Sometimes you can be like you are visible. In a wrong way. But when the eggs of God come, it removes you from the root and removes you forever. I don't know if you are hearing me. I wish you can be fruitful in God's way, not your own way. I wish you can be fruitful in God's way because there's a judgment. It's an eggs of God that will cut you from the root. You dried up. Very soon you are forgotten. Listen to this. I was learning, I found that when Saul was a king, his problem was David. And his son was not even minding about the position that Saul was in. It was an ex of God. It was an ex of God. Because Saul was disobeying. God began to look around the one who replaced him. You know, disobedience makes you to be replaced. Can you tell him about disobedience? Makes you to be replaced. Because you will be dried up. Many people have dried up. Paul says they are moving graves. So the eggs will cut to the roots. And you will be uprooted. Listen. This year you must be fruitful in God's way. Whether there is a delay and you are waiting for something, it's not coming. Don't try to do it your way. The Bible says, do not 
lean on your own understanding. Do it God's way. I said, do it God's way. And listen, when you are doing that, some people are not seeing anything with you, but God is watching. There's a season that is coming and is starting from now. I said, there's a season you've been waiting for. And from now on, you will see something in your life. If, if you believe, shout hallelujah. Don't look at your situation. Don't look at your trouble and ask yourself, why are you facing this? Don't look at that. Just obey God. Obey God. Carry on obey God. And don't allow this ex to pass from the room. Let me show you a scripture like this one. In Matthew 25, 13 to 14. Matthew 25, 13 to Jesus spoke about every plant. He says, every plant that is not planted by my father will be uprooted. I'm afraid of this scripture. He says, every plant that is not planted by my father will be uprooted. Jesus spoke this because of the heresies that were taught by Pharisees. And then now Jesus spoke a word and they were complaining. And the disciples said, can you see? They were complaining because of what you said. And Jesus said, hey, every tree, every plant, which is not planted by my father, will be uprooted. Can I tell you this? The Pharisees were there before Jesus came. But when Jesus came, he just overtake them. I see you overtaking someone. I see you overtaking someone. I see the Pharisees were there long time. No impact. No change around. No differences. But when Jesus came, people question him. Even them. Look at Nicodemus who came in the night. We have sat together and tried to find what you are doing is from God. What you are doing is from God. But we cannot speak in public because of our position. We know we are losing members because they were there for members and Jesus was there for the soul. Can I say this to you? I can see people they are not see anything to you. But there is something from God that is about to be born in your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. You must not look at yourself, you ask yourself why you are facing this. You must rejoice on what you have. As long as you are on the right track. As long as what takes you forward is an assignment that God gave. That's what takes you forward. Jesus came there Jesus with the assignment that God gave him. He proved that it's not the long life that matters. It's not money or I I mean, traces that matters. It's the assignment that I was given. If not, I'll be uprooted. It's a shame to find that you can be exchanged by someone when you are present. You must know why you are here. Know why you are here. Why why you were born. You must know why you are here. 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 Why you are you are here. Why you are here. Why you are here. Why you are here. This is your year. I said, this is your year. People need to know but you are born for this. When you are doing what you are doing, people, people must praise, praise, the praise the living God. God. This is the time that people, people must come and say, say we, we can see that truly you are with God, but we are afraid of losing our position. Whatever we are doing is for the people, but it's not from God. But we can see you are from God. Why? Because already they know they've been uprooted. I can see your enemies complaining because God is uprooting them. I say he's uprooting them. Listen. A Christian that will have roots that goes down. Listen, that Christian will still stand no matter what kind of winds. A Christian 
that the wind will blow but it's still stay holding the word holding the word blue like this because this is, your roots are visible when you are facing challenges how strong your roots are any challenge that comes any challenge to you I'm questioning do you have roots when Jesus was speaking about this he said you have roots you have roots you have roots when Jesus was speaking about this he said you have roots you have roots when Jesus was speaking about this he said you have roots you have roots when Jesus was speaking about this he said you have roots you have roots when Jesus was and it just falls. And he says, another one built you with foundation. And the wind blew and blew. But still, that house stands. Listen to this. Whatever you are facing is challenging your roots. If they are connected with Jesus by the way. Listen to this. If they are connected with Jesus by the way. If your roots go down to the way and reach there to Jesus by the way, the winds will come. Listen, from now on, don't judge anybody because of the winds. Judge that person by overcoming those winds. Tell somebody, say, my friend, don't judge people because of their winds. By the winds which are contrary. Judge them by how they stand against those winds. I, I see someone facing challenges, but you are still standing. When you are standing, you are saying, God is doing something. When you are standing, you are saying, you are, saying, you are about to give fruit in a due season. I say, that season has come. I say, that season has come. I say, that season you have been waiting for is now. It's now. Allow God to uproot your enemies. Stand tall. Carry on standing. Because this challenge is passing. Listen, when Paul looked at that because of the wind, he says, I'm rooted and I'm not afraid of the gospel of Christ because his power to salvation. Paul was saying, I'm standing here but it's like I'm falling but because I'm rooted there is salvation there is salvation what you are seeing is passing but I'm rooted and there is salvation and there is redemption I see someone who's facing a challenge I see redemption you must face a challenge that challenge must not uproot you it must not uproot you don't shake don't break. Don't shake. And don't break. Hold that weight. Believe God. Believe He's able. You will see yourself through. If you believe, shout hallelujah. If you can see how many times you are rooted. I just want to talk about it. You are, you are in charis. Oh, charis. You are planted. When you see what you don't wish to see, you are brought yourself. Assemblies. You are brought yourself. Faith mission. You are brought yourself. Whatever. Come on. Very soon your roots will dry down. Even where you were supposed to produce fruits, you won't have it. Sometimes when you are where you are, stay there until you see something. Stay there. I was telling some people that on the winter, the tree loose leaves. But not branches. And does it mean that the tree is dying? It is a season. There's a season where the leaves will go. The leaves are not fruits. 
they are just there to tell you the season when the leaves goes away don't shake rest carry on Sometimes when the wind is blowing, you see a tree dancing. You just see a tree dancing. You say, I'm alive. But those who have dried up, they break. You can rather lose those leaves. But the fruits are coming. I don't know if you're hearing me. You have lost that job. But the better job is coming. I say you have lost something but there is something better that is coming. As long as you are not uprooted, as long as you are still there, something good is coming. If you believe, say amen. Okay, look at this verse that in Matthew 13, verse 20, 21. Matthew 13, 21. The Bible says when they will come the word with joy, without, without root and because of the challenges, you know, and temptations, they become uprooted. There are some Christians like this, if you can read there, where the word of God is preached, they say, Amen! Amen. But when temptation comes, they lose everything. Today I want to pray with someone. But my prayer is to make you to be rooted and produce fruits. This is a year of fruits. People who think you won't bear fruits, but they'll be surprised. Thank God they have left you. Thank God they are speaking against you. As long as you are here today, something will happen to your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Sometimes when you look at yourself, you ask why you have lost all the leaves? Why put sure? Why matakala? How can fella to will? It's temptation. Temptation is there to shake you. Things that are not worthy. Things that are not supposed to stay for long. They must fall and dry down. You have lost that car. It was a leaf. The, the fruit is coming. The fruit is coming. Where everybody will desire. No one talks about leaves. But everybody wants to enjoy the fruits. Uh, I prophesy someone who is listening to you. Bear fruits that remain. The Bible, the Bible says, Jesus said, I have chosen them to bear fruits, but your fruits will remain. This year you will bear fruits that will remain. You will bear fruits that will remain. Can you just bear that fruit? Those who think you cannot be anything, I'm here to tell you, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something is about to happen in your life in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. There is something that God spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1. When, when God said, Jeremiah, I have appointed you to uproot. Today, I want God to appoint you to uproot. To uproot wrong friendship. To uproot wrong people around you. So that your territory will expand. There was something that uh, me and my wife we are still staying here in uh, Zone 10. Zone 10 here. Zone 10 more. So that time it was a great time of temptation. I want to tell you. About. So now, when we start to have these things here, so you know, these people came and built toilets. Now later they say, whoever is close to that toilet, go and build your shack there. We were and we a person just said, oh, I'm close to this toilet. You know, I'm close to that one. You know, it was a story. There came a time of demarcation. Now they start to show us that we put some yards. 
I've never seen something like that. We, 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 we Africans, we love lands. We, we don't know what to do with those lands. I don't know if you're hearing me. We, we love to have lands, but we don't know what we to do with them. You know what happened that time? So we had a gate of 2.5 each. So you'll be surprised. This one, you know, you just say, uh, this one is a pastor. Uh, okay, Muruti, he can't swing. do anything. So my, my neighbor so decided, na waka. because we were separated by the gates. So he wanted to take my part of my land. He, he gave me a small gate. And when he's giving me a big he himself, now, the, the gates is... 2.5. He has got two, his 2.5. Now he's giving me a, a, a one meter gate. And himself, he doesn't even have a car, but he gave himself. He, he was taking my land. But he think I'll keep quiet. I kept quiet. I kept quiet. So, Mama spoke with me. Mama I said, you are quiet about this. I said, yes. I said, no one is having a car here. I said, okay, I will develop a good strategy. I'm not working. And then this man goes to work. So what I'm going to do, I must just have to, when he's going to work, I won't fight him because he, he, he wants to take my stand. So when he's going to work, I wake up and remove the gate and throw it down. When he comes, I don't fight him. I just uproot what he has planted and put it down. When he's coming with a bag like ah, this, he stayed there. I and he can't ask me. He knows everybody has got 2.5. He knows the rules. You know, you understand the rule. If I'm sitting there, I'm watching. I can't take this and bring it back. So I'll be looking there. And in my heart, I'm thinking. <laughs> and then. I just allow him. I know building, building something is difficult, but to destroy it is easy. He came back. And in the morning, and put it there. I wish it. I would just hear that he's digging. He put it there. And then I leave him, he went there. On afternoon, I'm sure he's on lunch there. I approach. <laughs> he ended up realizing that this is just a waste. He's wasting his time. Myself, my job is just to do like this. And then from there, Put him where he will pass. You know, you have to talk one day. And then he talks too much, this person. Pastors can talk. And he's stupid. But he's following the rules. The rule is to uproot and himself come and plant. Uproot. Let's see who will be tired. He get tired. When he get tired then, one day I was turning around, it was Saturday, he greeted me. I said, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. We greet each other. He said, Maki, here there's a problem of the gate here. I say, what is the rules? He said, they say 2.5. 2.5. Oh, you know. Okay, thank you. Let's follow the rules. Can I tell you this? If we just follow the rules, they plant, but there's somebody they bring to you. Don't fight them. Uproot it, throw it there. If you see this friend is not the right friend, uproot that friend. 
You see, you just buy a new startup and you won't die. Or you leave him when he's calling. Ring, ring, ring. ring. And you just say, boom. The day you hold the phone, you say, sorry, I'm busy, don't call me again. Because you know he's making you to see. He's planting something on you. And this makes you to fail before God. It's affecting your territory. There are some people that are making you small because you are just allowing them. I want God to remove them today. I want them God to remove them. God will remove them. Remove you. God will remove you. Tell a neighbor, God will remove you. I said, God is removing you. Can you tell a neighbor that God is removing you? Listen. There are some people must be uprooted now. Where you are working, where you are doing business, where you are staying. I uproot them. Today. Know this scripture of Jeremiah 1 verse 10. The Bible says, Jeremiah was given a mandate of uprooting, even planting, even you, you have been given. By your mouth, you can uproot them. You can uproot them. You can uproot them. Are you ready to uproot them? Are you ready to uproot them? I say you can uproot them. One time, the lady she's here, and uh, I will tell you about what happened to this lady. I was praying with her. When I was praying with her, the demon began to manifest. And began to manifest and say, No, we can rather die. We can rather die if this one she's free. I want to tell you what God does. And from there, I said, oh, because this one God is delivering him. And you have chosen to die. Okay, take your choice. And she was free. When she was free, within a week, the, the lady that was speaking to her was admitted in hospital. Another week, Die. Just like that, boom. And it was over. There are some people that need to die so that you become free. I don't know if you are hearing me. I have seen that with my eyes. And this person was, I'm a wish. Nobody can do anything about me. Some people were here when a Sangoma came with another boy. With another boy here. And then now he was just telling me straight that nobody can do this and heal this boy. If you heal this boy, I will know that Jesus is here. And I Touch the boy. And the man fallen. Before he died, he confessed. I was the one that was living by, by the blood of this boy. He changed to be an old person. That day, my wife cried. Please. Pray for this man. People will say you have killed him. I said, no, he killed himself. He said, if this boy will live, he will die. So now he is I never touch him. He just confessed, yes, this was, I was doing this. And he said, there are people who are waiting there, patronizing him. They were around. Listen, there are some people. I said there are some people you don't need to fight them you need to give them to God just follow the rules just follow the way I don't know if you are hearing me just do what God wants you to do I've already seen that I've seen that there are some people if they don't 
they are not uprooted. You won't breathe well. I don't know if you're hearing me. And pray that God must forgive them. Let them uproot themselves. Let them uproot before they are uprooted. God must forgive them. If not, they will receive what they have spoken by their mouth. I see God planting you where your enemy was staying. You are about to possess the land. Where you are staying, you are moving to a better place. You are moving to a better company. I see you going to a better place. I see you honoring things that you have never worked for. I see God giving you an assignment that will never fail. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I, I prophesy someone prophesy now. When you live here, somebody who took your things, who took your money, who was holding your money, who was holding your land, who was holding your things, your job, your business, must come and give you in the name of Jesus. When you live here, let them be uprooted. Take what belongs to you. Listen, when they are being uprooted, the name of the Lord will be glorified. The name of the Lord will be glorified. Can you take your job? Can you take your promotion? Can you take your business? What are you taking? What are you taking? They must be uprooted. They must be uprooted. I see them be uprooted. Sit down.